All right, so moving on, let's start covering each individual map we have. Let's start off with the base color. The base color is quite self-explanatory, so just import your diffuse color for your hair, and you can just plug that right into the output node if you want. I like putting emission into the hair system. Uh, there's an emission slot into the Unreal Engine output node right here. Because we have emission, that will kind of distort the levels of the diffuse, so I suggest appending a multiply in the node after the diffusion so you can darken it as the emission goes up and you just set your B to the level you want. So the higher you go, the more it stays the same, the darker you go, as you slide this down, the diffuse will get darker. All right, and you can send that straight to the output node, or another thing I like to do is multiply over the height map over the diffuse texture. This adds a little bit more depth to the hair cards. You can see what this, so I'm just pulling the height channel out and I am clamping it so it doesn't go over and I can control the low and high values of the height map filter with a clamp node right here. And I just multiply that by the diffuse and this way you get like an overlapping shadow effect with the height map. And we can see this take effect if I just apply this real quick. This is with the height multiplied over the diffuse with the hair. You can see it's quite a little dark and richer looking with shadows or and some sense of depth between the hairs that are underneath. All right, and there's an after shot with the height map turned off. All right, and you can just plug that straight into the base color. Okay, let's cover the scatter input right here. Now, this is one of the things that may trip up new users to Unreal and hair shading. What is a scatter map? The substance that I bundled in with Hairdini comes with a roots scatter tips mask, and you pretty much would plug the green channel, which is the scatter, into the scatter node. A scatter map, if you do not know, when you have specular highlights on the hair, usually they're more towards the root and then it'll scatter light as it passes through the hair and that scatter map is generally away from the specular highlight towards the tips of the hair uh, and concentrated towards like the middle section of the hair. So if you have like a specular highlight up here, maybe like three inches away from the root, uh, maybe like another inch or so down, you'll start to see light scattering as the light enters that specular highlight and gets reflected back out after it goes through the hair. In a sense, it's sort of like subsurface scattering. And so you would pretty much get your hair cards and the scatter map would be the mid sections of the hair cards uh, if you wanna keep it simple. And the Herdini Substance Designer filter comes with a scatter map bundled in. So in Herdini, if you open up the Substance Designer map called Roots Scatter Tips, I have color coded the roots of the hair red, the midsections green, which is which we will use as our scatter map, and then the tips are colored blue. In the substance graph, you can adjust the values of where these are located and their contrast and fall off values as well. And if you are not using the Herdini plugin I made, pretty much would just find a way to mask out the midsections of your card and plug that in. But if you are using Herdini, you get it bundled in. And once again, I color coded it red for the roots, green for the scatter map, and blue for the tips. So grab the green channel, and I suggest uh, appending a power node to it and that will pretty much uh, control the contrast and fall off and you get it updated right there in the shader. So that way you do not have to go back and forth and try to update the substance designer graph because uh, if you manipulate settings in the shader graph, you get a much better feedback rate. Right now I appended a power node to the green channel, which is our scatter mask. And as you can see, that'll adjust the contrast as you can see on the shader ball. So we can change this at will and we have pretty much an instant update and we can avoid going into all the substance designer settings. So if you make your own scatter map, you can you don't have to worry about it being procedural or not. You can always still adjust the levels within Unreal using a power node. And then I also like appending once again a clamp node to that. And we can start previewing that. And this way we can have control over our low and high levels. So if we raise our lows, we'll be completely white. And then if we think this is too bright, we can just lower this down some and plug it into the scatter. And you'll notice that there is no metallic output in this node input. Uh, it even says so on the help menu on Unreal controls how metal-like your surface looks like. So that actually replaces the metal map. 
And I will show you what this looks like without a scatter map. So if we just unhook this real quick. Okay, and right now for comparison's sake, this is without the scatter map plugged in. As you can see, our hair, well, it looks like hair, but it's actually kind of flat and dull looking. And it looks pretty much opaque. So we will turn our scatter map back on just so we can get a good before and after shot. And this is with the scatter map applied. You can see there's actually, the diffuse texture looks more realistic. It doesn't look flat. It actually looks like there's light going through a translucent hair strand as opposed to a flat opaque strand of hair. And you can see subtle color changes as the light goes in and out. And so it's not really a big mystery uh, if you're confused by it. it you know, a long story short, once again, you just, it's the uh, mask value for the midsections of your hair strands, uh, if you want to keep it simple. The specular highlight, you can just plug in a lighter value of your diffuse color if you want. Uh, I have a built-in specular map in the Hairdini substance. And once again, I put a multiply node so I can control the levels. And the roughness map is self-explanatory. You should be able to bake one out when you do your hair cards uh, if you're not using Hairdini. If you are, the substance graph comes with a gloss map for the roughness values. And we just do a one minus node after that to convert it to a roughness map since that is in opposite space. You can see it right there. There's a roughness map. You just plug that in. And the Hairdini substance also comes with uh, options to change the roughness value as well with the gloss threshold and gloss highs cap. So this will make it more glossy as you go to the left, more rough as you go to the right, and this will cap off your roughness value. All right, so you can control it within the substance graph like I just did, or again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you can just always apply clamp nodes and power nodes to control the contrast and the in, uh, high and low levels of any map you put in. We have an emissive output in here uh, to help simulate some subsurface scattering effects. Honestly, that's as simple as just, you know, hitting the three key and making a color and then putting it into the emissive slot. So right there, and you can just plug that in there. But I have set, I have this set up already. And again, it's just a simple color with a multiply node so I can darken it and adjust the settings as I wish. I have, you know, like a little peach colored emissive filter going on in here. Uh, if we can turn this up. Yeah, look how fruity that is. That is way too powerful. So, all right, and let's say we do not want emission. We can just control and drag it out. And you'll see it looks kind of bland and lifeless without emission. So we can see pretty much we're just working with the diffuse and scatter right now. And it looks very dry and kind of opaque. It doesn't quite look like transparent hair. And the emission filter, you know, it does get rid of some sense of depth, but it's worth it because it does blend in the hair altogether because this looks rather scraggly without it. So it is, it is a good blending method to, you know, just tie the whole wig in. All right, and up here, I have this as an option. This is masking it out so the emission gets more uh, apparent at the ends of the cards as opposed to being all up and down the hair. When you think of backlit hair, it's usually at the tips. You know, you get the stereotypical photography shot where, you know, the tips are have this epic rim light and then the roots are kind of dark and hidden. So let's say you just wanted to have like a emission towards the bottom of the hair and not at the roots. Here's a little trick you can use. You get the, you get the texture coordinate node. You just right click, hit texture coordinate. And this has the UV values uh, for the object that you're applying this material to. And so you get a mask filter, which is called a component mask. And the hair cards in Hairdini, uh, if you have your own hair card system, your UVs, this may not work for you. So this is more Hairdini plugin specific. But the way I did the hair cards is that the, the roots start at the top of the UV tile and then the tips are at the bottom. And so each hair card takes up a full tile from zero to one in both directions. So if we want to make a mask out of the UV coordinates from the top down, we will just get a, get our component mask and just make sure the green is checked because that is the Y coordinates or the V coordinates going up and down. And if we start previewing this, you'll notice uh, for some reason Unreal, someone explained this to me, but yeah, Unreal Engine for some reason is inverting the Y coordinates. So it should be black to white. I have no clue why. It has nothing to do with Houdini, and Houdini it's correct, but for some whatever reason, this should be opposite. So 
grab your UV coordinates, the V value, the Y value that controls up and down the height. You plug this into a multiply node, like I just did right there, and then we multiply this by our emission mask. Start previewing this, and you'll notice how it's gradually becoming more emissive as you move down the hair card. And once I apply this, you'll see that the roots are no longer emissive, but the bottoms of the hair are. You can see the effect right here taking shape. So notice this is no longer emissive, and then as you move towards the tips, it becomes more emissive. All right, it's kind of hard to tell here from the actual model, but you'll notice it does get a little bit darker here. So those were the easy maps. These are pretty much self-explanatory. And then the ambient occlusion down here is self-explanatory. Right, so if you could preview that, it's very faint little shadows and you can adjust them uh, within the substance graph. Or you can, again, append clamp and power nodes to control the levels manually within the Unreal Shader engine. So this way you get quicker feedback. A lot of people don't consider ambient occlusion necessary in a hair shader so but it's there in the substance graph if you need it and if you do not have an ao map within your own hair card uh, system uh, it's not a big deal generally with hair cards all right so we got the easy masks out of the way so let's go on to the harder masks all right these are the more complex graphs within our system as you can see quite a few comment boxes dedicated to each map. With the more complex maps, we have the opacity mask, which we'll use edge masking on. We have the tangent map, which is our flow map to give each of our hairs individual highlights, and we will pull out of the Herdini system's flow map for that. We have the world position offset, and this is the pivot painter portion of our hair system. And again, the Herdini system comes with a quick setup for pivot painter so you don't ha not have to set it up manually ever again pixel depth offset will be our last semi-complex map that we have to set up and this is one of the, my favorites it just pretty much takes any hair card intersection and prioritizes what has a greater height value to render on top of that intersection so it looks like the hairs are weaving in and out of each other as opposed to two flat cards intersecting like a dreamcast game which we do not want and FYI, you'll see the backlit input right here. Unreal Engine flat out says it's not hooked up to anything anymore and it doesn't do anything. So it's kind of like they never did. They just left it in there and never took it out. So this is not hooked up to anything. So do not worry about this. If you want to download the material file or see pictures of the graphs online for reference to follow along, please visit my website at cinema.com. You will find a setup guide for the Unreal Engine hair shader with Herdini or you can visit and follow my ArtStation page at artstation.com slash cinema. And that concludes part two of the Unreal Engine hair shader tutorial. In part three, we will cover the opacity input and edge masking. And that is not Herdini specific or Houdini specific, so you can follow along at home if you use other software and just want to learn a bit about edge masking hair cards.